Gabapentin is the generic name of a drug invented in the 70s to treat seizures, as in people with epilepsy. In Canada, gabapentin is only approved as an anti-epileptic agent. In the United States, it is approved as a treatment for pulsopathic neuralgia, a type of nerve pain that occurs after shingles. But gabapentin is used off-label for many other conditions. Off-label means outside of the official approvals by Health Canada or the FDA. Physicians prescribe gabapentin for sciatica, neuropathic pain, fibromyalgia, CRPS, diabetic neuropathy, anxiety, insomnia, alcohol withdrawal, is smoking cessation, restless leg syndromes, and even hot flashes. In this video, I'll answer 10 questions that people ask me about gabapentin. So, let's talk about gabapentin today. Question number one, how does gabapentin work? To understand how gabapentin works, you need to understand how a seizure starts and what does a seizure has to do with pain. A human brain has approximately 100 billion neurons. Neurons talk to each other by sending electrical impulses and releasing neurotransmitters, which are chemical substances. The synapse is where this communication occurs. The electrical impulse arrives from one neuron, then there is the release of the neurotransmitters, and the information is then passed to the second neuron, and so on. In people who have seizures, these neurons start firing spontaneously, and the electrical impulses start spreading from one region of the brain to another, and then this electrical activity provoke those involuntary movements commonly seen in people with epilepsy. Gabapentin is an anti-seizure or anti-epileptic or anti-convulsant medication. It inhibits the neurons firing and that's why it stops the seizure. So why do we use it to treat pain like neuralgias and nerve pains? So I'll explain that, but before I continue, let me remind you that this video is not intended to replace medical advice. It is for educational purposes only. And you should contact your doctor for a proper diagnosis and treatment plan for you. In case of emergency, please go to the nearest emergency department or call 911. Well, when there is a nerve injury, like sciatic nerve compression or a nerve inflammation, like in shingles, the nerve will start firing electricity spontaneously. An anticonvulsant medication like gabapentin inhibits those spontaneous firing, and then the pain is less frequent and less intense. Gabapentin also interacts with other uh, receptors in the brain, like NMDA, glutamate receptors, nerexin 1 alpha, and thrombospondins. All of these mechanisms contribute to the effect of a gabapentin in reducing painful sensations. There are some randomized trials of gabapentin for chronic pain conditions, and I will summarize here the conclusions of the Cochrane reviews. This review showed that there is moderate quality evidence that oral gabapentin at the dose of 1200 mg daily or more has an important effect on pain in some people with moderate or severe neuropathic pain after shingles or due to diabetes. This one showed conflicting results in terms of pain relief for fentanyl pain and no improvement in function and sleep quality in those people. Here, this review showed very low quality evidence about the benefits and harms of gabapentin for fibromyalgia. Here, there is another review that showed very low quality evidence for gabapentin to improve pain and walking distance in lumbar spinal stenosis with neurogenic claudication. I have another video 
of spinal stenosis that you can watch. And finally, for migraines, the Alberta guideline in Canada for the management of headaches in adults, recently they changed their recommendations about gabapentin. It's no longer recommended for episodic migraine prevention or for chronic migraine prevention. If you want to read more about this video, there is in the description below a link that you can read the script of this video and you can send it to your friends. Question number two, what is the proper dose of gabapentin? How do I know if I'm taking the proper dose? When treating pain, the person needs to take gabapentin three times a day, morning, afternoon and evening. I usually start with the lowest possible dose to avoid adverse effects. I start with 100 milligrams at night because the main side effect is the sleepiness. Then I increase the dose, one dose each day until the person is taking it three times a day. Then every week we increase the total amount from 300 per day to 600 per day in three divided dose of 200 milligrams. Then a week later, I increase the total daily dose to 900 milligrams. Then a week later, we increase to 1200 milligrams a day. When the person is taking 1200 milligrams a day in three divided dose of 400 each, then we are able to evaluate if the pain is better or not. If the pain is relieved at least 30%, then we keep the dose at 1200 milligrams a day. If the person can tolerate the adverse effects, we wait a few weeks and then we may increase to 1800 milligrams a day. In some cases, we have to go to 2700 milligrams a day and rarely we go to the maximum dose of 3600 milligrams a day. Not everyone needs this highest dose. Most people respond at 1200 milligrams a day and do not need the dose increase. Be careful because in people with kidney diseases, this dose has to be decreased and adjusted according to the renal function. Question number three, can I take gabapentin with other painkillers like acetaminophen or tramadol? Well, painkillers like acetaminophen and anti-inflammatories are okay to take with gabapentin. They have different mechanisms. However, any other painkiller, any other drug that causes sedation like opioids should be avoided and tramadol is an opioid. Question number four, why did they give me gabapentin before surgery? Well, pain after surgery is very common and there are some types of surgeries that cause more post-operative pain than others. And a subset of patients will develop chronic pain after surgery, unfortunately. 99% of chronic post-surgical pain is caused by some sort of neuropathic pain, nerve damage that occurred during surgery. I'll give an example open heart surgery. There is no way that the surgeon will be able to reach the heart without cutting a lot of nerves in the chest. These nerves will have to heal after surgery and in some cases they will not heal properly and neuropathic pain will start. I showed to you before that in the case of nerve lesions, when we cut nerves, the nerve can start firing spontaneously and that will be interpreted by the brain as pain. So anticonvulsant medications were initially thought to be a good strategy to avoid those spontaneous firings and allow, allow time for the nerve to heal. That is why gabapentin is given preoperatively. So when the surgeon starts cutting those nerves, they will be less active, they will be less active and will not develop chronic pain. There have been many randomized trials showing that people who receive one dose of 1200 milligrams of gabapentin prior to the surgery and continue receiving it for eight to 10 days had less chance to develop chronic pain after surgery. Question number five, is gabapentin different from pregabalin? Well, they are both anticonvulsants. They are two different drugs, but the effects are very, very similar. They're very similar in structure. Pregabalin is more potent than gabapentin, and it can be taken twice a day instead of three times a day. The maximum dose of pregabalin in a person with normal kidney function is 600 milligrams per day, 
divided in two doses of 300 milligrams each. Question number six. Can gamma pinching cause weight gain? Well, very rarely. That's not a common adverse effect of GABA pinching. And when this occurs, it's not more than 10% of the body weight. Question seven. Can I drive if I use GABA pinching? Well, when the person is starting treatment with GABA pinching, it's better to avoid driving or operating any heavy machinery until the dose is stable and no more changes are being made in the dose. Once the person is on that stable dose, the doctor can reassess if the person is too drowsy or dizzy. Drowsiness, sleepiness, and dizziness are the two most common adverse effects of GABA pinching. But most people will adapt to GABA pinching and those adverse effects will diminish over time and they will not be a problem. Then, when the person is not feeling sleepy, drowsy anymore, and no dizziness, then they can resume driving. Number eight, do I need to stop using alcohol if I'm prescribed gabapentin? Well, both alcohol and gabapentin inhibits the brain, and they cause the same effects in, of sleepiness, dizziness, and can also make the person stop breathing, which may lead to overdose and death. Number nine, is gabapentin good for anxiety and insomnia? As I said before, gabapentin is being used for a variety of conditions, but gabapentin is not a panacea. Panacea means uh, it's defined as a solution for all diseases. Many of my patients with chronic pain also complain of anxiety and insomnia. Anxiety is a unwarranted or a excessive fear especially about vague or unknown situations. It usually affects a person's ability to concentrate and work. I could not find evidence of gabapentin to treat anxiety. There is a Cochrane review showing moderate quality evidence of a clinical response in social anxiety disorder, but this is not the same thing as generalized anxiety. I also did not find any evidence to support the use of gabapentin for insomnia. Perhaps people are only using because one of the most common side effects of gabapentin is sleepiness. Question number 10. Can people abuse gabapentin? Can people overdose on gabapentin and die? And the answer unfortunately is yes. Gabapentin is a drug that can be abused. It is a mild tranquilizer and some people may have euphoria similar to cannabis. Addiction to gabapentin is very rare, but people may have withdrawal symptoms when they stop taking it abruptly. Gabapentin can cause death by causing the person to stop breathing. This is even more common when gabapentin is taken with an opioid like codeine, morphine, oxycodone, hydromorphone, and hydrocodone or fentanyl. If you like this video, press the thumbs up button here and don't forget to subscribe to this channel and turn on the notifications so you can be alerted when I post new videos. Watch the next video here. I hope you like it. Goodbye!